everybody. Welcome to Peg Warmers. This is Ryan Bell. Dustin Freepartner. Ashley Bartok. And Jennifer Bell. Welcome everybody. This is episode 10 of Peg Warmers. We're going to start off with some general toy news. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on just in average toy news other than Marvel Legends that I'm aware of. Do you guys have anything particular? Not really outside of, you know, Comic-Con exclusives. Right. We're going to talk about later, but there's a lot of Star Wars Funko Pops coming out right now. I guess I'll talk about those yeah. because I only know about Funko Pops <laughs> and Build-A-Bears, and Jennifer only knows about Build-A-Bears. <laughs> Jennifer and I bring nothing else to the Peg Warmers podcast except for is this for, for Funko Pop and Build-A-Bear. A little bit of hostility <laughs> is this from retaliation comments we from, made from your stupid podcast. Turtles podcast. <laughs> I can't wait till we do an all-girls podcast. We're just going to rip on you guys. <laughs> I'm going to rip on you so hard and you won't be there to defend yourself. We did not rip on you. It was pretty bad. And it was unfair because we weren't there to defend ourselves. I haven't oh, listened Ash to it yet. Oh, How no. mad should I be? <laughs> it was pretty. It was like Ashley only Ashley only knows about Funko Pops and Build-A-Bears. And then Ryan was okay. like, well, Jennifer knows about Build-A-Bears and blah, 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 blah. And that was like it. <laughs> that was like it. Nothing else. Like Ashley doesn't know anything else except Funko <laughs> Pop and Build-A-Bear. This is a Bear. case where Ashley takes a lighthearted yes. joke. It wasn't lighthearted. No, it was totally lighthearted. No. Was it even you who said it, Dustin? Yeah, because Brian, Brian? Brian was like, I used to ask Ashley for stuff to order for the store. And I'm like, dude, if you want to know stuff to order, yeah, exactly. talk to me. Like, if you want Funko or Build-A-Bears, talk to Ashley. Mm -hmm. All that to say, all that to say, we weren't commenting on your all, the, the full wealth of your knowledge only being those things. Sure, okay. I anyway. think this is going to go down in history as the great schism of our podcast. <laughs> Ashley and I are going to go start our own. <laughs> Probably, yeah, might as well. Or take this yeah, one over and kick I, you all out. <laughs> I told, I told uh, Brian the other night that they were going to start their own called Plush Warmers. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a little creepy. Yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, it does sound. <laughs> that, like that's the weird thing with like stuffed animals and stuff is like people get creepy about it real fast. Yeah, as you guys know on the Facebook groups. Yeah, it's very disturbing. Yeah, if you go down and that keep dark this hole. PG. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I don't, don't want to go, go into any specifics whatsoever. Don't go there. Well, no, no, neither of us were trying to. No, no, I meant like I'm, I'm telling our listeners, don't go there. Don't try oh, no. searching for it or anything. No, no, like please that. don't. Yeah, no, but I'm just I'm telling the two ladies in the room that was not us knocking you. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure. It, it I'm wasn't. Sure. You can you can think that all day. I will. Because it, it like the tone of it sounded like it. Well, you have to remember. <laughs> That's such a girl thing to say. It wasn't what you said. It was how you said it. <laughs> it, was, it was totally like, and it made it worse because like we weren't even there to defend ourselves. So I just can't wait till we do an all girls podcast. And rip on you. We were just trying to tell Brian that he sucks at ordering action figures for his store. And, and not to ask the girls. No, he should talk to us. He should talk to us about it. Not talk, not, not talk to the girls about it. No, he won't talk to us now. Well. He won't talk to us now because <laughs> all we know are Funko Pops and Build-A-Bears. You, your life is now a whole lesser degree of enjoyable because Brian isn't pestering you about ordering stuff for the destination. I don't care about that. <laughs> it's our street rep. Come on. Street cred. Yeah. Anyway, all that I know that's coming out right now, general toy news-wise, outside of Comic-Con stuff, is Marvel Legends. The X-Men wave, people are getting it from Entertainment Earth, and it's hitting all over the place. Someone's getting that Captain America wave from places. Uh, I have no idea where. It's probably just China still. Yeah, probably paying them uh, ten times the price. Yeah. But uh, you, you can pre-order the X-Men wave, the which is the Juggernaut bath. You can pre-order Spider-Man wave, which is the Space Knight Venom. Blah. And the... I, I know you say blah all the time, and I just want to slap you because I think it's going to be so awesome. <laughs> but I just love – I could have, like, 20 Venoms and never never care. I know I'm weird like that. Oh, I love Venom. I just am not big on that one. I know. I It's, like, one of those things that, like, Venom? Okay, I'll take it. Like, it could look like garbage, and I'd probably be like, but it's Venom. <laughs> you, know, you know? I feel like it would be a little better if the paint was just different somehow. The The white on black? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's that's just it's too demo. glossy or something. Like yeah, okay, I, okay, that makes more sense. See, I like it because it's like Space Knight. And I'm too lazy to repaint it, so <laughs> I'll, I'll just pass. 
Uh, and then you can pre-order the Captain America wave, which is a abomination builder figure. And then Spider, yeah, Spider Man Space Knight. Yeah, so you can get all three of those right now: Captain America, Spider Man, and X Men. Way to go! If you have all that kind of money, I know <laughs> at your disposal. I know. I wish they came. I wish they were spread out a little bit more rather than hey, here's three waves right now. That's why I'm, I didn't pre-order the Captain America wave. Decided I'm going to go hunting for it. Maybe I'll bring Pokemon Go with me. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, I got Captain America and a Charizard. <laughs> Do you want to talk about these pups? Yes. Um, there are some that are appearing to be in some systems now. As far as I think maybe GameStop's system, I'm not 100% sure. So they haven't hit yet? No. And I don't even think like the images prototype oh. images or anything have popped up at least i don't know because i really haven't really been about it yeah i haven't really been following but um we've got chopper ezra hera can kanan sabine and zeb so basically all the rebels rebels and i know that they had once confirmed that they were doing an ahsoka but i don't know if it's in rebels ahsoka or clone wars ahsoka i wish they would do clone wars pops have they done clone wars pops no, no. Yeah, because I feel like they've. Totally I think they're skipped. skipping. I think they're skipping over Clone Wars for everything. I was gonna say the, the Black Series. Right, that's what I'm skipped saying. Skipped over uh, all the cool Clone Trooper Commander designs. Like Rex, I would love like a maskless oh, yeah. like Captain Rex or sc- oh, something yeah. like that. I, well, I would inch. take any of the Rex, any of the cool Jedi, any of the right. Um, I mean Savage. I would, you know. Uh, oh, what's and what's that one girl's name that I like a lot? Uh, Ventures? Ventures? No, what is the. the She's like Sister? a pr- the princess or something like oh, that. Uh, I can't remember her name. Obi-Wan's She's got girlfriend. No, the Mandalorian. That's queen? Satine. No, I don't like her. I don't like her. I like the one girl. She's like pink Sophie. and she's got blue hair. And she's like friends with Ahsoka. And her brother is. I've not seen <laughs> later later into well, Clone I can't Wars. I remember to what her name is. Tag on that. There's so many people in Clone Wars. There's a ton of people in Clone Wars. That's probably why they have skipped it because if you do one, you have to do. You yeah, know, you but do that's one just clone like commander. You do one clone commander, and you need to. You know what I mean? You, it, I bet you the the urge is to do all the clone commanders. You do one of the generals, general Jedi's. You're gonna have to do all the Jedi generals or whatever. Rio, Rio Chuchi. She's a. Uh, Sounds like Pandora, a pasta noodle. She's a pan- <laughs> <laughs> She's a Pandorian Rio politician. <laughs> Politician from the moon of Pantoria. And now Ashley's going to hate you. Oh, yeah. Okay, those people. I just, I have not seen, and I have I've not watched the last couple of seasons I of like Clone Wars. I like her a lot. I need to so really bad. Jennifer, I want to do that. Watch the, ras- the last bit of Clone Wars and then do Rebels. Maybe you should uh, vote for her in Fans Choice poll. There you go. And just get like 50 Facebook groups to boost your votes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. No, they're all voting for The Force Awakens loot so no they're all voting for jaina now yeah why why don't you back up and explain sometime between this that's general toy news we need to share okay go ahead no you do it no (laughs) fine fine okay general toy news that i'll let dustin pick up but i'll introduce there's yet another star wars black series poll despite the fact that we have not gotten darth revan or sabine the winners supposedly can somebody say rigged right of (laughs) the last star wars black series fan poll we are doing another one, despite the fact that those figures have barely been shown in prototype form and have no current release date or schedule as far as we are no- I'm content of. with the fact that it's just it's coming out at some point. I'm, I can understand it. It just is a little annoying to me. What? That there's already another fan poll and we didn't Before get the Before we, ha- we don't even have Revan yet? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I think it's really stupid. And I, would, I wouldn't be as being a nancy about it because it's just really really annoying and i don't believe them and the last poll was handled so shoddily that yeah. i just this want one's worse i i know it's so lame how they're doing it and then uh i just if they told me when those figures were coming out i maybe not be complaining as much well, yeah if we I haven't knew. heard anything but we've just we've seen like they've been they've they've brought the prototypes to like one convention and we've seen a couple a couple you know, shadowy, artsy pictures. That's it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, rant about the first poll is over. <laughs> There's another poll. Dustin, give us... I have not... 
because I'm like so turned off by it, I've not paid much attention <sighs> to the actual polling. Now. I've pretty much just given up. Like, what's it's, happened? It's, that's made you. It's it's all these polls are being rigged. I I don't know how. I guess they're doing like there's like Facebook groups that you can join where you can trade votes. Like people will vote on something on oh. the poll for you, and you go and vote for them on some other poll or something like that. All these different Weird. polls have different characters leading their polls. Huh. See, that's why this I don't time understand. yesterday, I'm not I'm not going to name polls, but one of the polls, Cop Jenny and Center, Darth Talon was leading, and it was like Grievous and TFA Luke behind her by like a significant margin. Those were leading, and Jaina, I mean, she was in like she was last, like yeah, she was three. like last yeah. yeah, and sometime within like the last 24 hours, she's gotten like 400 votes. Jeez. It is, it is. He was showing wow. me, he showed me last night, and it went from, like, zero to 159, and then I asked him what it was this morning, and it was, like, 230-something. And I'm like, there's no way, unless unless somebody knows a ton of people and just asks them all to go vote, but I just, I don't know, I find it very hard to believe. Another frustration I have with these polls is the nature of Star Wars is that, like, People want a figure of anyone who's ever shown up in any kind of Star Wars movie. <laughs> ever. Like, period. It's like, hey, that guy who was a random extra who carried an ice cream bucket looking thing has an action <laughs> figure. Like, he does. And he's just called, like, Ice Cream Bucket Man. Uh, and so what I would rather have, and I'm confused by all the websites, because some of the websites are saying just leave a comment and we'll count that as a vote. Uh, that Jedi Insider was doing... An actual was it eight different choices that they had? Um, speci- you know, yeah, specific one of them had where they wanted you to list your top ten. Yeah, it's just really, it's really like an odd shotgun blast approach at doing a poll. When I would rather them say, "Here's a list of ten. You know, Hasbro telling all these websites, "Hey, distribute this list of ten. Get your audience to vote on these ten. Of these ten, we're gonna make two figures or I, one yeah. figure." Because the the thing for me is I want Hasbro to just be saying, we're making a General Grievous. We're going to make a Force Awakens Lupic. We know there's a market for those. Why why even have people bother? Because it's Hasbro. On that? I, and that's that's the problem, right? Well, is it's it's yeah, weirdness. All Hasbro the way knows the what they have in development. They should, I know. They should be like, hey, we have these in development. So if people are voting these up, you know, just eliminate them. Or tell people that not to vote on these. Exactly. We know you have a Grievous in development. We know you're going to make it to Force Awakens Luke. I mean, <laughs> why seriously. We should, we should have a podcast called Hasbro Sucks, and then maybe, it, like, literally title it Hasbro Sucks. We should. <laughs> and then, like, maybe it'll just go around and it'll end up to somebody at Hasbro at some point. I have that one girl's email, or I think I think I have her email. Maybe From I should. Force Friday? Yeah, maybe I should forward it to her. Problem is, I think <laughs> they wear it as a badge of honor. Yeah. Because we'll talk a little bit about San Diego Comic Con and 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 them, and them, but they're they're really bad at Toy Fair. At Toy Fair, they e- exemplify the fact that they think they are the, the elite class of toy manufacturers, and they don't deign to enter the actual Toy Fair. They rent out a whole other convention space in a hotel adjacent to the Toy Fair, and only do private invites to retailers and stuff. And it's like, oh. Okay, you don't really care <laughs> about the people. But anyway. Okay. It, I'm going to go ahead and list it. Jedi Business is, <laughs> dot com is the one that had the, the poll where they were oh, doing it in two phases anything. where people, whoever was voting the most for the top ten, they listed that in phase two, and now people are voting on that. Well, Talon was leading at one point yesterday. Now she has 232. Starkiller has 348, and Jaina Solo has 462. So Wow. Yeah. that was a, That's a big jump from this morning. This morning yeah. it was 230, and now it's 400 and something. Yeah. Okay, just... so I'd like to say, too, that I wouldn't mind having a Jaina Solo 6-inch no, figure. However, unless she's coming with a lightsaber or something, she's kind of playing. She's I mean, she'll not... totally come with a lightsaber. I mean, but she's just like an easy... 
configure, I guess, to customize. Yeah, they won't even need Whereas, a mold. They'll just <laughs> right. Yeah, you can just take a, a mold. Right, raise exactly. Mold you could use raised mold for that. So that's why I would like to have a Twi'lek or some other like species of some kind. That's because I, mean, I, I posted on there and said some. I don't know. I was kind of frustrated, but I said the same <laughs> thing. Like they should, we should force them to make these alien molds because they're gonna. Yeah. They're gonna make more if if there was a Darth Talon or even if they chose the Hera, you're gonna get more figures, like right. more Twilight figures right. made, because they're being forced to make a mold. Or I can take a Hera and I can paint it and make myself a Darth Talon or something like that, where I, rather than like having to right. use Sculpty or something like that and mold it myself, which is a giant pain. Oh yeah, well that's that's the catch twenty two is we're thinking about it. As From a logical point, yeah, <laughs> I, that you know, when you this is the problem with having the hoi polloi, just like the masses vote like this. That's why I would just rather like than, the 2016 election. Yeah, <laughs> 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 when you just open up a vote that broadly, that's why I'm saying like we need some restriction on like what characters we can vote for, not just say everyone except Rogue One, a- and like we just need we just need some guidance, and they need to make hey, okay, Jedi Insider and you know, Jedi Business and review site a b or c you only get the first thousand people that vote those are the only ones that count or something you know what i mean like or just make it to where you know everybody could just click vote as much as they want i mean (laughs) at least then it makes it somewhat more equal any any kind of structure i don't care what would be helpful it's just bad with emailing because most of them are email us your your answer or whatever and I don't like yeah. that because you can't see. The best one I've seen is Jedi Temple Arch- Archives because they have the upvote system, but you have to make an actual discuss account in order to sure. upvote, and they're they're not counting any right. random uh, with, guest votes. But with yeah, okay. with the email, okay. like you don't know, like there's if no if they're seeing your right. if they're seeing your response or. They could basically make it up because the Hasbro is not sure. going to ask them like, "Oh, we want to see the proof that this is, you know, the one that was the most popular vote." Well, and as if I worked at Hasbro, that would be my concern, right? right. Is how did we get this information, and is it helpful? Uh, you know, is it actually should we make business decisions mm-hmm. on this? Because what if it is going to require a whole new molding and tooling and you know that that's a lot of work and it's a lot of money, and we need to. You know, th- I, I have to imagine that's why the last, the last time they're probably like, okay, it seems like we can't ignore Revan. But there's no way the second place figure was Sabine. No, like, absolutely there's just, not. There's just no way. However, I'm totally cool with them saying, hey, we can't. Revan's going to take a lot of tooling, and Sabine's in the top ten. Let's just say, she's number two because we're already working on her. Right. Like, I'm fine with that. Like, I get it. I'm totally fine with that. But again, to Jennifer's point, transparency would be nice. Just a little bit more transparency would be nice. I think the solution is not having so many sites doing these polls. Yeah. yeah. They, they have, have way too many. There's like 15 different sites that are polling. They need to have like one or two. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, heaven forbid we go to Hasbro's site or something. Exactly. And just do it through there. And all well, these that's, websites could that's the final, advertise it. Final poll will be through Hasbro, but... Okay, so by the time this podcast airs, the second phase of voting for the 6-inch Black Series Star Wars figure will be ready to go. So you can go to StarWars.com and vote for the next figure. From July 18th to the 22nd. Even though we're really annoyed by this poll. (laughs) Whatever makes it to the final polling. I don't know how many... Was it top... 10 picks or something like that. And just use your brain. Well, please see our voting. Facebook page for the correct thing. That's to what vote we should for. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, we're going <laughs> <we're gonna laughs> to post on our Facebook page if you see, what we want to have happen. If you, you see something like Force Awakens Luke and you vote for it, I'm going to come and I'm going to find you and I'm <laughs> punch you in your face. Also, if Matt, the radar <laughs> technician, gets on there somehow and you vote for him, I'm also going to come and find you and punch you in the face. No. Now hold the phone. There. No, I don't no, want. No holding the phone. I don't <laughs> want if that gets a six. Made, I am done collecting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want one. I don't. I mean, I would take it if it was a custom or something like that. But I just, it would be so ridiculous for them to make that. 
<laughs> That's why it would be awesome. No, no. no. <laughs> That's the worst thing I could possibly imagine. I she could actually voice. punch you in the face right now. <laughs> in the same room, so. I just, it, I, I don't disagree with you that it would be a waste. It would be a complete waste. Of, However, I'd be so mad if that got picked over that Talon. Is, that is possibly the funniest moment of Saturday Night Live in the last like five years for me <laughs> was that uh, Kylo Ren undercover boss story. I thought that was just the funniest thing in the world. So something in plastic to commemorate that. I think I could would, almost, would make honestly me happy. say I would rather have a Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Oh, draw really? the line. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Oof, duh. <laughs> so I guess we're not voting for Matt the Raider. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> There's like some really good customs out there because I've again, seen, that's I've a figure yeah. that's probably easy to make a custom of. I've we don't need one. Ones. I've seen some of the small ones. Just vote for whatever you want. At this point, I've lost faith in <laughs> the collecting community <laughs> anyway. So it's not the collecting community. It's it's just rigged. Some of them. I mean, the ones that yeah, whatever. At this point, yeah. Rant over. <laughs> anyway, so there's some Star Wars pops which led us down the Star Wars train. Uh, that, that tends to be frustrating because it's connected to Hasbro, and most things connected to Hasbro tend to be frustrating. All right, guys, so our main topic here is the loved, hated, all the way in between San Diego Comic-Con, specifically San Diego Comic-Con toy exclusives. And they're bittersweet for many of us because San Diego Comic-Con is ridiculously hard to get tickets to, expensive to go out of state in general for many of us and you know finding a really expensive hotel and going to a con we didn't even attempt to get tickets this year have they changed it from the lottery system no it's still the crazy yeah refresh your web page lottery system yeah I just, I just feel like it's not worth it to even try to go anymore yeah just uh, because a lot of the exclusives that we would go for i mean i know some people go for panels and stuff like that right but we would mainly go for toys and a lot of that is yeah. standing in line from like as Which soon as you get there, and then being in line literally all day for right. one thing one that thing. you could probably end up getting online later, or you know, like because some when of you the factor in how much money you spent to get there, and the fact like you're saying, actually, you spend a whole day where you could do countless other things. The markup actually is reasonable. Yeah, it, I mean, I hate it. Oh no, no, it is. And the things are just easier to get outside of Comic Con. Yeah, like. I mean, it's. Again, if you're into panels and you want to go there and see the people and want to do Movie trailers, smaller cool booths stuff. and you don't want to have anything to do with the bigger toy booths and stuff like that, you could buy the toys, like, what is it, the weekend after San Diego Comic-Con? So you could still buy them if you go to San Diego Comic-Con and you want them and you really just want to go there for the other stuff, but that's not us. Yeah, I mean, my main comment is just that San Diego Comic-Con... I, it's great. It's fantastic. It's the Super Bowl of geek culture, of comic books, Definitely. Of, of pop culture, of all that stuff. It's fantastic, and I'm not knocking it at all. I, you know, you guys as sports fans would love to go to the Super Bowl, right? But you kind of know it's a pipe dream. Depends on who's playing. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying like you know, you know, you'll go crazy and try to get there once. Right. Yeah. I mean, something. it's it's but it's definitely it's, something you've got to try one time. I think. Right. And yeah. uh, but it's it's hard. It's big. You know, you're not going to make it every year. Yeah. You know, you're not going to make it every year. And so, uh, I think it's wonderful and great. I just don't like the fact that there are annual exclusives linked to this con i like exclusives that are linked to retailers i like exclusives that are online exclusives um, i like stuff that it they're obtainable even though they're still narrowed uh but but having it tied to san diego comic-con and then for p places like or companies like neca to do the turtles comic-con exclusive that they're going to do oh, the 16-bit <laughs> yeah. you know and, and that's a rough one hasbro I will give credit here to Hasbro because they have stuff up on their website. Now, it's kind of hard to get still. You have to refresh your page and whatnot, but it's not terribly hard to get. And yeah, I it's mean, I've two years in a row, I've, I've, I've gotten everything I wanted. Right, right. Way. It's it's a bit of a chore, but it's doable, and uh, you, you get it even though you weren't able to go to the con, and that's cool. But not a lot of places do that because they don't have the resources to do it or whatever else. I don't, I don't know, but... So that, when that happens in particular, when it's, hey, the only way you were ever going to get this is if you came to the con or you're going to pay aftermarket prices, I just get kind of annoyed. 
as a collector. Yeah. But that's where I would rather, and to your point, too, about time spent at the con. I like local cons. Right. So I can run around and see people, meet people, talk to artists, buy, the, buy toys, find cool finds. I don't know. I'm kind of over the big con of San Diego. It just con. every every year it comes up. Just the thought of it just stresses me out because I know that there's going to be sure. things that I want, and I know it's going to be hard for me to get them. Right. And this year, I think it's going to be even harder for some of the stuff that I want. So, yeah, well, I don't even sure. think I'm gonna. I mean, there's uh, there's not a whole lot that I want, but I'm sure like it's just going to stress me out just thinking about like how I'm going to get it. Yeah, yeah it's a, that's the thing. They're playing on things that people really do want. Yeah, and they're making those like. The really hard things to get, which is stupid, which is really aggravating. And I don't get how it benefits the company. Exactly, I really, really don't because we're all sitting here saying like we desperately want these things and we're feeling screwed over by the people <laughs> we want to collect from. Like, how is I it don't a good business model? I don't know. Well, I'm just gonna play on the Funko thing for a second because that's just what I do. That's right? all you know. That's all I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Some of these are like limited to like five hundred to a thousand pieces, I and know. that I don't understand. That's nuts. I don't understand you're limiting just asking it. for scalping at that point. I mean, I understand maybe like limiting it to like ten thousand pieces or something like that because right, that's right. a little more reasonable. But I mean, a thousand pieces—that's that's that's nothing. That's like that's, that's, that's the people. Even... That's like the people that are there in the first five minutes. Right. Mm-hmm. right. That's that, not and even the, a line. and those people get a limit. I think of like two or something like that per person. Person. So if you have four friends with you or something like that who don't care about them, you can buy all those up and then you can quadruple your yeah. the price that you you know if you want to go and sell it on eBay, which well, is whatever. Especially but on things that were already if they're like remakes or repaints variations of things that were already really hard to get in the first place. Right. Like the the ghosts from Disney, the, the haunted mansion, yeah, the haunted mansion pops. Which were already impossible to get in the first place when they originally yeah. came out, and now you're doing them as what they're like clear versions or are they like green clear or what? No, there's three white and one blue, and they're like glowing and they glitter or something like that, and they're limited to a, a thousand pieces. Yeah, that's insane. Those are gonna be gone in right. Like I mean, minute, those hour. Disney minute, yeah. they were the original ones were Disney Park exclusives, both for like Disney World and Disneyland. Sure. I mean, I don't, I don't remember how many they made, but they made a bunch. They made a ton, and they were hard. They were already hard to get because people were going and buying all of them that they could buy, and then turning around and flipping them on eBay, which whatever. But it's just they were already hard to get. So limiting them to a thousand pieces is just going to be like that. I think yeah, that's just going to be it's going to be a nightmare. Funko's already a nightmare. So. Well, and I think I think. To turn to turn the corner to the next bit of San Diego Comic Con exclusives is to say this: first of all, exclusives aren't the end of the world. They're fine. They're good. Uh, and even San Diego Comic Con, it's not the end of the world. I don't love it because I don't like to have to like offer a sacrifice in order <laughs> to get an exclusive. Um, I don't mind having to be patient. You know, with all, with all the Walgreens, Marvel Legends, and and uh, store exclusives, retail exclusives. I've just I've just had to wait a little bit, and then they've been very plentiful, and I can find them. But I feel like the thing that actually turns me off, despite the fact that I don't collect them, are the pops, are the Funko pops. Like, seems like Funko and the Funko pops have driven the ex- this exclusive culture to the extreme. I mm-hmm. completely agree. I just, if I went to San Diego Comic Con. I am like 90% sure that I would avoid the Funko area as much as I could. And that sucks because I collect them and I like them. And I really would like to have some of the exclusives that you can only get there. But I don't want to go there because I don't want to get hurt. Well, it also and I don't want to. Yeah. The, a lot of the exclusives for Funko are now exclusives to, to other stores, other booths, companies like Funimation right. and Fugitive Toys and Toy Tokyo and yeah, so those are the ones that are really, really difficult to get, and people just eat it up just because it's ex- it's an it's an exclusive item. They eat it up. Whereas me, I'm just like, hey, I really like that character, and right. I love collecting mm. that. And I 
I would love to have it. I'm kind of guilty of the sticker fever, though, too. So I was going to ask you. It's kind of like the sticker stuff, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what it is. You slap a sticker on it, and people go crazy for it. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I, I fall into that category as well because, I mean, if you have – that's my issue with the other stores getting the, the exclusives, though, because they put a different sticker on it than what you can get at San Diego Comic-Con. And I would like to have the San Diego Comic-Con sticker and the, and like, the convention, ex, you know, exclusive sticker or whatever. That's just how I am. I'm, I'm a completist. <laughs> sure. And I want to have, like, all the variations of it. So in, oh, even though the figure is the same and the box is the same, yes. it's just <laughs> the, it's just like that – that two cent sticker that's different and I pay like an extra hundred dollars for it or something. And I get that and I get playing to that. I have no problem with it, but you know, looking at, looking at Hasbro, you know, they've got, they've got the Marvel universe three and three quarter inch set, which God Dustin will talk about. <laughs> they've got two star Wars black series exclusives. They've got a transformer GI Joe mashup. They've got a Marvel legend and they've got one for all of their lines. Uh, yeah, and I then know you Funko has actually Funko. staring at me because you made the Marvel Universe comment. <laughs> She's just and watching. Dustin mumbled that it was garbage. It is garbage. It is garbage. You're it's, garbage. It's terrible. <laughs> it is terrible. You're terrible and garbage. <laughs> You're terrible garbage. <laughs> well, it just it's just funny that we'll mention it. Yeah, we'll, you can we'll talk more in detail. Yeah. But you know, Hasbro mm-hmm. seems to be for all their lines, they're doing like one exclusive. So for the poor souls like me who would love to have it but need to say no, it's not that big of a deal. But Funko is doing nine waves of exclusives? It's absurd. That's absurd. It's very absurd. It's, and it's, it's not painful. Just like one, it's not just like one pop for Star Wars, one for Marvel, one for DC. It's multiples in each of those. It's not just one ghost from Disney. It's no. a rehash of all the ghosts mm-hmm. from Disney. So it, it, it just seems to play on that times 10 and it seems a bit manipulative and that's just Funko's I'm just, booth. I'm just laughing I'm just laughing because I couldn't imagine as a person being at San Diego Comic Con if I were to manage to get everything that I did want how would I carry it around <laughs> I don't understand how I would carry it around without like smashing the boxes against other leave. people that were there well, yeah, just like all the pops. If I just yeah. went to Funko alone and got all the pops that I wanted which I don't want a whole lot of them but I would have a hard time walking through there being able to carry the stuff because there's just so much stuff well we've had to even at local comic cons we've had good enough hauls that we've had to like go back to our car and then come back and i don't know how i don't know how that works that can't be easy at san diego that cannot be easy. no i don't i don't really know between like the parking which i'll rant for like two seconds i know san diego comic con is in san diego and they want to keep it in san diego i know but they clearly, your convention center is too small for how big it's gotten. It needs to move to L.A. Anyway. So, yeah, I don't mind exclusives. You, I can complain about them because I can complain, and that's my prerogative. <laughs> but I, I'm willing to give allowances for a you know one exclusive set for a line. But, yeah, Funko just seems to be going bananas on it. So there are a lot of... A lot of cool exclusives, um, but there's also some some duds. I I happen to think it's more duds than positives this year around. But first of all, I don't know anything about these Entertainment Earth ones. Do you want to do you want to mention them at all? Yeah, Entertainment Earth is pumping out some horrible, and like I said, at least in my opinion, some exclusives this year. A lot of the stuff there is just garbage. They have some three and three quarter scale um, exclusive action figures with five points of articulation. It's the reaction. Yeah, stuff. think think reaction. I'm pretty sure it's not reaction though. It's just like a. They look exactly like the reaction figures, but I'm pretty sure they're not labeled as reaction figures. I don't know why people keep making these things. Some yeah. people like them though, like yeah, Ming Chang or whatever. I just, I mean, I guess because they they're making action figures, even though they look horrible. Yeah. Um, some of them are like the Big Bang Theory characters dressed in like Star Trek outfits. Oh, They're fourteen ninety nine. Wow. Are you serious? That's expensive. Yes. But apparently the card you can break down the card and it turns into some kind of like background or oh, something like one stupid. Of the sets or yeah. Something. And they're making some Twilight Zone ones. But the thing that's blowing my mind that is they're making a ton of them are these like wooden pin mates things. 
they just remind me of those old little people toys when you were oh, like yeah. really like exactly. you're a tiny they kid that you stick in the school buses and mm-hmm. stuff that you move around. They look exactly like those things. Exactly. They're ugly and they're weird looking and they look like they're packaged in boxes that look like pops come in. It's like it looks like exactly like the Funko Pop packaging. And they um, do. Yeah. Are they Funko? Are they no, no, they're Funko? not. They're not Funko. That's funny. It's Maybe like, it's yeah. Like a, it's Biff Bang Pow or whatever. It's like a new Amish company making, getting into the vinyl market. Do you see him? Yeah, it's Biff Bang Pow. I was making a joke. I know. It does. Just just yeah, and it even looks like the the wording and the coloration on the box looks right, like it pop. looks That's exactly. Hilarious. It's I guess it's to catch people's eyes when they walk by them or something. But that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Yeah, <laughs> they're just awful. And in Entertainment Earth is just that's just awful. And they're also they're also having that three pack Black Series Droid pack is an entertainment exclusive online. And that's not going to be at Toys R Us because it said it's it's also at Toys okay. R Us. I'll buy that one. Well, I'm only collecting Black Series now anyway. From so Star Wars, yeah. I'd buy everything. But that is not a con exclusive, if I'm correct. It's just an Entertainment Earth exclusive. I thought they said it was going to be. It's probably going to be at the con. I thought it was at Toys R Us or something. It's both Toys R Us and Entertainment Earth. That's great how they're doing that. I mean, Toys R Us has always had their. It says that it's going to be online at ToysRUs.com slash comic convention. It says beginning Thursday, July 21st. Is that Droid 3-pack or whatever? That's usually what they do with their Comic-Con exclusives. I don't remember. Well, they've had the like the Han and Greedo. Okay, yeah. The Han and Greedo and the table that was, was, Jabba, was Jabba a con exclusive that I Toys R Us so. had? Yeah, but we got him off of Hasbro. We but got that one Black Series. Not, not the throne room, so oh. that was strictly... Comic Con. Well, and the droid set is what? What are the droids in the set? I don't know their names. Um, it's R two A three. Who what is, color is he? Um, he. I think he's the white and red one. He assisted the Rebel Alliance pilot Wedge. And then R five K six, and it says who stood alongside Red Squadron leader Garvin. And then the R two F two, I guess, is the gray one for Rebel Alliance Starfighter pilot Biggs Darklighter. Biggs. So Biggs Garvin and that's cool. They're uh, actually Wedge. like they're not just like repaints. They're kind of actually have a story. And, and I'm a and sucker stuff. for them. I want those really bad. Oh, I just sure. don't want to. I don't want to anticipate the sixty dollar price tag for them. Well, oh, that's what it would be. And yeah, because they're six inch and they're twenty dollars a pop usually. So yeah. Or if not more, like sixty five, ninety nine, okay. or something. I'm, I'm sure. I'm okay with that price point because that's at least what they would retail. I guess, for yeah. I really like them. I like, I like. They look droids. Cool. They Everybody look cool. knows I'm sucker for droids. So. And that's a great way because that's a, that's a great exclusive because it's droids which people like me who only want to collect like Jedi, in the Black Series can easily pass, um, but. They're rare characters, but not necessary characters. So people like you who are like, I love droids. That's great. It's fantastic. Well, but at least you're getting your cool value, too. I mean, they're, s- they're smaller value. figures but than like a regular six-inch figure. But yeah. still, they look They look so scale. good, though. Like that R2. I'm, hap- I'm totally happy with that. But so does this mean that they're going to make a six-inch wedge and a six-inch bigs? And a six-inch Garvin to go alongside with their droids? No. No, <laughs> they should. <laughs> They could. I highly doubt it. But I know. They should, though. Biggs, Biggs sh- is fairly popular, so I wouldn't be surprised if a Biggs gets flipped out. I'm less pleased with the price points on that Kylo Ren and Obi-Wan. That is, movie. yes. Yes. That is a little steep. So the other Black Series exclusives that are just going to be at the con, the, the droids uh, are going to be at the con, but they're also at Toys R Us, which is great, so you'll be able to get them online. The ones that are only going to be at the con, and then are they even going to be on Hasbro Toy Shop? Sh- or they yeah, just they will be. Yeah. Will they? Okay, they're, so they're going to be on Hasbro Toy Shop at some time. They're also, at least the Obi-Wan here, in, is going to be a Star Wars Celebration Europe con exclusive as well. But we've but got... Kylo the, Ren will be too. Is he going to be as well? Yeah. Okay, so they're both going to be at Star Wars Celebration. But we've got uh, a Kylo Ren who has an unmasked head. He's got Darth Vader's busted up helmet. And then I think the coolest part, he's got a stand and a big banner, a big red banner, a la kind of Nazi Germany, you know, big draped banner with the First Order logo on it, and it just looks really great. 
but that's going to be forty five dollars, forty four ninety nine. Yeah. Which for the banner it and hurts. an alternate head and an extra accessory, that's that's huge. That's that's a rough price. Like it's it priced me out. Thirty five dollars, I would have bought it. I mean, it's the rough. packaging that that both of them are in those kind of have cool. we seen the packaging for yes. Kylo Ren yet? I, actually I think seen so. Them. Really I think so. I've seen packages for the Obi Wan. I so thought it was on the website. Well, Ashley brings up those pictures for me to ooh and awe at. Uh, the other exclusive is an Obi Wan from maybe not New Hope, Star Wars New Hope, and uh, so he's all old school, old Ben looking. He also comes with his little table. And it has a little plastic hollow projection of Princess Leia, which uh, that one's cheaper too, right? It's like thirty five. Right? No, no, it's forty four ninety nine. Is it? Yep. I thought they're, that one's cheaper. Th- that's what they said on the the website. Well, so. at least at least with that one, you're getting more value. Like you're, I mean, I- if you want to go by weight, you're getting more plastic. I agree. It but says that it it comes with an electronic light up table. Yeah, the table's got electronics in it, okay, so it lights even so it lights <laughs> right. up. Okay, right. well, th- yeah, right there. Yeah, th- that price isn't bad considering you're getting a whole figure with accessories and a set piece that has electronics in it and stuff. I mean, this is as cool as I think the Kylo Ren banner is in the unmasked head. A, I believe we're getting a regular Kylo Ren with an unmasked head in one of the upcoming waves. I think, yeah. So that is pretty much moot. Um, and then the Darth Vader helmet is neat, but couldn't be that expensive. It's small. And then the banner and the stand, I just don't think they're another – that they're another uh, – what's a normal price? $20? So another – I mean, I, I, <laughs> would, I, think I would be, okay, I would be yeah. okay with paying 35 for it. I think I, that, I, I think the Kylo – I mean, I'm going to buy it regardless. No, right. No, we are, but – There's other things I'd I'm be cool with $35. Too. Now, I'm an out-of-box collector, so all I'm looking at is the figure and the accessories. However – just like the first order stormtrooper who was was he 35? No, no, he, no was he was 24.99. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay, so I mean they were essentially charging you a little chunk of change for the nice box and the little booklet that that talked about stormtroopers and stuff. And that's not value I care about, but I know it's value. Yeah. And so since I haven't seen pictures of Kylo Ren's box, mm. I'm willing to acknowledge there might be a really great it might be a really great display case. I hope that it is. I hope it's better than what the first order stormtrooper came in because he came in like that the box and the box looks cool or whatever. I just like to see my figure. You had to if slide the cover off. And this and when you slide the cover off, it's completely exposed. It's there's no like there's no plastic yeah. or anything in front of it. So if I were to take that cover off and try to display it, it would get super dusty. Dust would get in like the articulation yep. Yep. and stuff like that, and I don't See, like they've that. They've gotten better at some points, and then they went back to that, which I don't really understand. Like the Han and Greedo, that was that was great. They were sitting in the the cantina scene with the table in the middle. And Example was that Jabba set. We can't yeah, open and display them. that. Yeah, because well, I mean, it's I can open it, but it's just it's going to get super dusty. That's what I'm. That's my problem. I don't like. I don't want to get dust all over the figures yeah. if they're still sitting in the box. Yeah. But um, the Obi Wan box looks really cool. I don't know if you saw that. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. It opens. I don't know. I guess it's magnetic or something. But it opens up at least to where. And, and, and he's in the plastic and it's in the tray. plastic, right? But it looks like the yeah, scene, just like the Han and Greedo. It looks that. like yeah. it has like the scroll, the text mm-hmm. scroll. And it looks like he's watching the hologram, just and like that's how I would prefer the Kylo Ren to be boxed yeah. up as well, because then at least we can display it like that. And then you can close it too. And that's very cool. That's what the front of the box looks like. Yeah, the artwork is if cool. Yeah, and if you want to see any of this stuff, go to sdccblog.com and they, they have an exclusives um, section. You can look at the San Diego Comic Con exclusives they have so you can see all these pictures. Also, so I might be able to add these pictures on um, the Peg Warmer's blog if I get that up and going. So at the end of the podcast, we've got our website. On there, so just check out the website and look for our Peg Warmers blog, and hopefully I'll have all the pictures up there sometime when this podcast airs. Anyway, that's it for Star <laughs> Wars. So they've just got those three exclusives right now. And like we mentioned, Marvel Universe, the three and three quarter, well, I guess they're called Marvel Legends now, yep. which I hate. 
But the old, formerly known as Marvel Universe, now Marvel Legends, three and three quarter inch, one eighteenth scale figures, have the a, a. At least it's a nice theme set. Of the collector's vault, right? Is that what is that what they're calling it? Yep. Yep. You're like McDonald's toys. With no my my big problem with the the three and three quarter inch Marvel <laughs> Universe figures is they've really gone down in quality and. I don't mind the figures that they have in this. I don't like the quality of the figures. They, they have do in look this. really bad. <laughs> They're awful. Because we've got the collector, <laughs> who's the only one that looks good. Because he's the only one that's a full, yeah, a full I mean, blown he, figure. He, he he does look good. I'll admit that. But the rest of them are just terrible. Because you've got the collector, you've got Lockjaw, you've got Moon Boy, you've got Howard the Duck. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and Cosmo. Cosmo. Is who it, is a personal favorite of mine, and I'm just Lockjaw. excited. Lockjaw is a personal favorite of mine that I've been wanting to figure out for a I long know. time. Not uh, not this. Not a little plastic. I still want it, though. I still want the pack because the box looks nice. The and box even, does look nice. Even, I mean, I, I wouldn't it's buy like it. It's $70. I wouldn't buy it wow. to... I wouldn't buy it if I were an out-of-box collector to take these out of the box and display them because they do look like cheap knockoff toys or something. But the box looks nice and I do love Lockjaw and I love Cosmo and the box does look nice. You've got really cool cover work, cover artwork. Well, I mean, I'll, I look mean, at it this way. The box does look nice, but still look at it this way. Like I, I, I want it because we're not going to buy the legend set. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's Some funny. We're complaining things. enough about this set, but the legend set is, Far worse oh, yeah. because at least, <laughs> at least in this instance, the cover art is really cool for the collector's vault, uh, Marvel Legends three. three and the inside line. of the box looks really cool. Well, similarly, it seems to got a Velcro tab or magnet tab. It opens up. You can see the the figures and the accessories in a little kind of collector's vault make out. You know, you've got the collector right in the middle. Looks like a two tier room. You've got Cosmo over on his side. You've got Moon Boy in a cell. You've got Howard the Duck in a cell. You've got Lockjaw in a cell. And then the little artifacts that it come with, uh, the Zodiac Key, the Casket of Winters, of, uh, you know, that we've seen all kinds of times, and the Wand of Watum, they're all in another little section. So it looks great. And then on the door panel that opened up, it's got little bios on each of these little characters and artifacts, which is neat. It looks good. It does. It looks really good. It does. It looks good. And the collector's like weird popular <laughs> right now in the TV show and stuff. Did you see that they finally announced the, the legend set today? On yeah, it looks super late. <laughs> We've known about the, this for like the a name? month. I didn't even know, the name of it is The Raft. Yeah. The Raft box. I don't understand that. Well, The Raft is the underwater prison. Oh, okay. So that's what they're going off of. So, yeah, mm-hmm. we've seen this set with some leaked images online for a while, and all of us were like, that can't. Like, that must be it, but it's really stupid, so it can't be it. And then just today, Hasbro finally said that they're doing a set called The Raft um, that comes with a, I think it's a lighter paint version of the Abomination Build-A-Figure that's going to be coming out with the Captain America wave, uh, an Enchantress figure, Dread Knight, the old, I I only know him from the old crappy Iron Man cartoon show. Uh, There's a Purple Man figure. A sand form Sandman, and then, yeah, a McFarlane kind of styled Spider-Man. It looks just like the pizza Spidey build with a, the head, it might even be the Scarlet Spider head, just painted regular Spidey looking because its eyes are real big. Is that, is that Enchantress just like the Scarlet Witch? It looks, it looks almost exactly like Scarlet Witch, except maybe with a skirt sculpted on. Her he- her head might be a little different. It looks almost exactly like that. It's like same thing. It's just like blonde hair, and it's. <laughs> Most of the figures have a ton of reuse. Abomination is a new build a figure, so they just straight up repainted him and threw him in there. Enchantress, maybe has a new head and maybe has a skirt. Otherwise, she's still the best figure in that set. She yeah. is still the best figure in that set. Dread Knight is, you know, so I'm giving him kudos. They did a fairly good job of reuse here, because Dread Knight is the Baron Zemo. With basically a new head and a cape that I'm sure is from someone else. And then Purple Man is just the suit figure uh, with a, ne- a different, uh, a new head. And Sandman seems to be the Absorbing Man build a figure mm-hmm. with a new head. Have we seen the box? Did they announce they the show? They finally showed the box. It, I didn't it's see it. It's okay. It's not that great. 
The it's cover dumb. seems to flip up, and it has eel and electro and hobgoblin, which are all characters <laughs> coming out in the sp- in the next couple of waves. Eels in the Captain America wave, Electro and Hobgoblin are in the Spider-Man wave, and they're kind of like breaking out of their cells and looking down. It just the vault is a a really cheap excuse to make a ex, an, an exclusive full of random figures that don't make sense that don't connect to each other. So I the laziness there is annoying to me. The inclusion of Spider-Man seems really hil- off kilter because. If you're gonna do that, they should have just made this like a giant, like rogue gallery, like for a Spider-Man. mystery box set, like a you know, like the mystery minis, like the uh, boxes. Have it like that, but you just open it and it's just a random assortment of figures. That'd be pretty funny. That's what this feels like. It <laughs> like they just, feels somebody like just blindfolded them. They reached in a box and picked out six figures, and this is what we got. Well, uh, here's my backhanded comment. I just gave them. Uh, I just gave Hasbro a compliment by saying, "Hey, good reuse," but I, in, in the same breath, I can turn around and go. <laughs> way to be lazy and just say hey what do we have tools of right now let's make a box set well we have these guys how can we make them a cool box set well they're all bad guys so let's just say i like this spider-man so he can just be like crawling on the walls <laughs> in the prison i am for whatever so, reason. I so it's just kind of like lazy and seems weird I'm so tired of spider-man there's well that's my frustration with it too is they don't need to be making a whole separate exclusive spider-man when there's a consistent running wave of Spider-Man figures, you can easily slip that figure into. Right. I think a McFarlane version Spider-Man will sell well. By itself? By itself. Right. And I don't think it needs to be in a whole other set. No. So it's just weird. The the, char- the figures look fine. Abomination, we're getting exactly Abomination later with the Builder figure. So I'm also want. really not a fan of that anymore. Like, stop. Oh, yeah. I, I mean... The book I of Ashanti and yeah. Dormama. Stop Dormama. offering build a figures in other sets. I know it's it's good for some people. Like Ryan, Ryan's out of box, and he just I mean he wants the figure in the easiest method possible. But for inbox collectors like me, um, I like having things that are exclusive. Like the Dormammu was exclusive from the book of Ashanti set. Yeah, and now you're re-releasing it to mass retail. The same exact figure. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's got some slight ver- paint Does variations, it? I think. I didn't know. We'll still they haven't different. shown us any of them, though. I yet. know, yeah. So it might not even be true. I mean, I can't argue because people do want the figure, but that probably if didn't get it for com- from Comic-Con or couldn't afford to buy the box set. But If it's slightly different, that's better than it being exactly the same. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just aggravating. It is weird, though. They've started this new trend of including Build-A-Figures. Because you can't knock anybody for a repaint of a normal figure, but the build of figures are just a little more unique, and it's just weird. I mean, well, I mean, the Blast Star is basically a build of figure, and they never re-released him. So, well, not yet. Yeah, I mean, he was pretty much a reuse prob- of the. They're gonna listen to this podcast now, and they're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, we haven't, have we?" Well, we still don't. Well, the funny thing is, they're doing all this weird re-releasing of baths, which are accessible already through some work. But then figures like Black Bolt and Medusa and Gladiator, we've had no chance to get outside of the set. Or an even uh, even Star-Lord, the comic version of Star-Lord. There's been two figures of him, but they've both been ex- in exclusive sets. Now, at least he's been done twice, and it's maybe a little easier to get him, but still only been in exclusive sets rather than in uh, you know any kind of normal wave that you can get a hold of stuff on. So anyway, we're not... Super happy with the Marvel Legends set, which is a bummer because that, that's the only one I ever really look forward to. Yeah, me too. I mean, that's that's the one I'm always look forward to buying every year. But so much for that. Well, maybe everybody else will buy that, so then I won't have to worry about having to get that in my cart, and then I can get the three and three quarter. Oh, I don't think you'll have any problems. Getting <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> that, and then the Kylo Ren and the. Obi Wan. It's also funny that we knew about the collector set and the vault set through eBay and some weird stuff a while ago. And all this time we were just and Hasbro they were like didn't turn around. Knockoffs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? It's like I was wondering, like maybe Hasbro is going to respond to this by not actually bringing this set to the con, 
because everyone's kind of hurrying in on these sets, but they last, don't min- care. last minute reveal, I th- it, exactly, they don't care. So, yeah. has, uh, has there been any fig, fig arts? Not that I've seen. There's going to be a repaint of the Brawly figure. Really? Yeah, it's going to be um, like his hair is going to be a little more green. Huh. His Super Saiyan hair is going to be a little more green. I haven't noticed a ton of difference other than that. Uh, there but is. But he's not that old. He's not that old, but it, it, he was. He's r- the aftermarket know, prices yeah. on him though are bananas. So. Oh, I want that. Yeah, it's a. Uh, they're going to have a. Is it a San Diego Comic Con exclusive though? Uh, I believe so. Oh God. It's going on my list to Nicole. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that I mean that should be easy, fairly easy for her to get, right? I, I don't it. imagine it will be too difficult. Oh. Really? I no, I don't think it'll be too mm. hard to get. Where Where is he gonna be at? I'm sure the Bluefin booth. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I didn't see anything on Bluefin so about the only it when one I they're looked. Doing Power Rangers or anything this year? Uh, Sentai figure arts have really died out. Hmm. Um, it's mostly me. Common Rider now, um, which bums bums a, bums a lot of us figure arts collectors out, but. What about Gundam stuff? Uh, I'm not aware of anything, but there there probably are some Gunpla things that are unique to it. I saw a bu- Bandai post a bunch of stuff they had coming out this year. They have a lot of weird little um, the egg mm, egg yeah, style I, figures. I They're saw doing those. A gold stormtrooper, I think a silver stormtrooper, and a phasma. I think. A- yeah, there's or a maybe I confused the the silver stormtrooper with phasma. I don't know. <laughs> They're also doing a couple turtles. So they've got this, like, it's not that they're doing exclusives for a lot of existing lines or repaints of figures other than, like, that Brawly, but they're doing a lot of these r- little random exclusives just being offered from Bluefin. It kind of feels like Bluefin is saying, hey, there's some stuff in Japan that's never going to come over here. Let's make an excuse for it to come over here. Similarly, that's how the Sand Trooper variant from the movie realization line that they're doing which it's great figures. You should check the unboxing that we did of the Boba Fett and the Sand Trooper. But this is identical to the Sand Trooper figure, except the pauldron is black <laughs> <laughs> instead of orange. Which is funny. Is that re- is there really no difference? I it doesn't I look like there's anything. any extra accessories or anything. It looks just like. But he at least he's like the same price as all the other ones. He is. Though. He's ninety dollars, which is average price for for those things. Yeah, so if you were at Comic Con, you could buy them. Aftermarket will probably be high. Well, then I'll just buy another one and I'll paint the pauldron right. black. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, because the the crazier paint is the orange one. Because on the orange pauldron, it's painted orange and then it's weathered really nice. So I it looks saw, great. Yeah, I saw your unboxing video. I know you did. It's fantastic. You guys should go watch it. It's very slick. Very yes, slick. it's very <laughs> slick. <laughs> very slick, just like the figures. Absolutely. Super slick. Absolutely. Don't don't do a drinking game connected to how many times I say slick. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> gave Ryan we, a lot of crap. About we can't that. endorse that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you could just paint the pauldron black and because the, like I'm looking at this picture and it's it's black and it seems to give a little bit of extra paint to the little oh, what's it called rivets that are on there. But you could do that, like. <laughs> A customizer could easily right. alter that, even on this nice of a figure. But yeah, it doesn't seem to be all that different other than just a pauldron repaint. But it's an army builder figure, so it makes sense. I really want to unbox ours. Oh, all of our movie realizations. Open them up. Oh, mm-hmm. is that right? I told you that when we watched their video. I want I only want to under the condition that we put we get a glass case and put them in the glass case. They but again, they come in the box where you know you've got to cut the tape to to open it to look at it, and if you know, I I just like them. I think they look really good. The and the real big rub for our inbox collectors with those figures, I imagine, are the fact that they aren't window boxes, right? And that's yeah, that's my biggest. That's hard. That's my big. It is hard because I I have a hard time like having just the box They're when it so looks cool. so when it looks picture. so awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then they just look so awesome and I think they would look really cool displayed in a glass case like all right by each other. Especially the new Imperial Guard. Oh my god, I know. <gasps> Which is available right now. Yeah, I thought he was going to be exclusive only for a while and then all of a sudden comic book stores and stuff said they started to get him. So mm. go get your Imperial 
Imperial Guard movie realization figure. They look awesome. What do you think of the G.I. Joe Transformers set? I love the fact that G.I. Joe and Transformers does these crossover sets. I love it. I think it's hilarious. Yeah, I think they're pretty good. Actually, they're, I, they're really neat. I wish G.I. Joe and Transformers would combine worlds. I well, they're doing that with the movies. Did you hear that? Oh, I haven't heard that. Like the Hasbro, or the, there's going to be like a Hasbro movie verse where huh. uh, Transformers, G.I. Joe, no. Rob the Robot, or Ro- Rom the Robot. Uh, they're going to be all in the same like universe, so they can interact and that stuff. That makes sense. What's in the GI Joe set? Tell me in the transform. What's what's that one going to be a mishmash? Uh, the set features GI Joe characters Scarlet and Autobot Power Glide as they fight Zatratron Z- and Soundwave. Zatran. 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 Yeah. That sounds better. Zatrat. It it does look hard. It's Z A T R T A N. No, it's Zartan. It's Zartan. So it was a typo. Yeah, it was it a typo. It just made me look well. stupid. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, man, that's, that name just doesn't sound familiar. Do you want to start over? Yeah. <laughs> so, Dustin, what's in that G.I. Joe and Transformer mashup set? What is it? Zartan? Um, Zartan. Zartan and Soundwave <laughs> to reenact the Transformers episode, The Girl Who Loved Power Glide in an Epic Showdown. So it seems to be but that basically they have the G.I. Joe figures of Scarlet and Zartan and then Vehicles... Uh, that look like the Transformers vehicle mode equivalents, but it's just G.I. <laughs> Joe vehicles painted up. Power glides red like he normally is, but it's just a G.I. Joe plane. And Soundwave looks like kind of a, a Venom tank, but painted up all blue, gold, and silver. I really like the the box for these figures. The box looks great. When we were in California, we saw a couple of other ones. We saw what the Soundwave... Oh, or Shockwave. Shockwave, Shockwave and the Starscream one. The oh, yes. Escape. I really wanted, but uh, the price is here. Something I don't need to collect. Well, they're big sets because of the vehicles. Like, they get expensive and stuff because of the vehicles. Like, this one's $100 for two little three and three quarter inch guys and right. two big vehicles. And that's not a casual thing. But the G.I. Joe collecting community isn't a casual community. It's It's some really dedicated folks who have kept the line alive simply out of their own collector desire. Like that the only figures that keep getting made for G.I. Joe are the collectors club figures. So and then these con exclusives. So there's a market for them. That's probably why they're still getting made. I'm just now seeing all these Transformers. I don't know how I missed them all, but I mean I don't collect them, but Is it the Titans Return? Yeah, the Titan Force set. The set will feature Windblade, Brainstorm, and Sentinel Prime. I just want the brainstorm. But, yeah, so Transformers is going to have a big set. None of the Hasbro stuff is going to be too terribly hard to get. None of the other con stuff is going to be really hard to get. It's just the Funko that seems to have. I mean, I'm just looking at this, and there's one set, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen figures that I see alone, and that's probably a fraction. Of this guy looks how, boss. How many Funkos? This, uh. What is that? Titan Class Fortress Maximum figure. Fortress Maximus, yeah. The new the new Transformers line is called Titans Return. It's a play on the old head, Headmasters line, where the heads would pop off and transform into their own little mini robot, uh, and then they would pilot the rest of the body as, you know, the plane or tank or truck or car or whatever. And then there was Fortress Maximus, who was j- could turn into a robot, but also a giant base. And so all of the figures in this Titans Return line are also able to turn into like a cannon or a, a base attachment that can then build onto the uh, Fortress Maximus when he's in base yeah, mode. It looks like it turns into a giant battle station. Yep, it's and it is enormous. It's, it's I would enormous. hope so for one hundred and seventy nine ninety nine. Yeah, it's enormous. Do you want to talk about any of the pop <laughs> exclusives? We've railed on Funko a whole well, that's bunch. that's ex- expertise. So. Yep. I guess so. I mean, <laughs> I'm only going to mention the ones that I have a slight interest in just because there are so many. So many. So many. So many. Okay. So first on my list that I'm interested in is Newt Scamander from Fantastic Beasts, even though we haven't seen the movie yet. I guess some people have read the small little book I haven't I have it's been a long time 
and so he looks really cool. I don't really know why he's an exclusive. I don't know what makes him exclusive. He's just kind of standing there with a suitcase in his hand. So it's probably like all the other Harry Potter exclusives where they just change like his accessory. Like instead of wearing a scarf, he'll be not wearing a scarf. Or I instead of carrying the case, it will be like the something case will else. be open later yeah, or something. Right. I yeah, something. Um, I'm sure that he'll end up being probably like Barnes and Noble or something like that. But uh, the other one that I'm really interested in is, I guess they're pop minis. Whoa. So I'm not sure how big we're talking. Um, it's the Harry Potter. It's a three pack of the Cornish Pixie, the Mandrake, and the Grindylo. And they look really cool. I love that Mandrake. All right. So the other ones that I'm really interested in because... I'm trying to narrow down what I'm collecting as far as Funko Pop goes, and Star Wars is what I'm really trying to focus on. Um, there's going to be the Thumbs Up BB-8 with his little <laughs> lighter. Yeah, and it's, it's super <laughs> cute. Awesome. And there's apparently rumored, or it's said to be shared with Hot Topic. So hopefully that's true, and we can get him at Hot Topic. That'd be cool. And then there's Han Solo with the Chewbacca bowcaster, and he is said to be shared with GameStop. So we'll see. There is also Game of Thrones, the six-inch Mag the Mighty. So that's the big giant dude, um, basically from the, so the crew with the wildlings. So lame that they made him a comic con I know, and he looks really cool, too. Hopefully he's somewhere because that's that's that was one of my favorite characters and one See, I, I really wanted a pop made out of. I think we're gonna give we've given Funko so much crap, but watch like all this stuff be available between like Spencer's Hot Topic, FYE. Spencer's has never had anything. Never had no, anything. but I wouldn't be surprised at some point if they do. You know, I'm just Spencer's just saying. dying. They but tried to get yeah. into the pop game, but they just they gave up like immediately. They should just give up altogether as a store. <laughs> but I, I don't <laughs> I don't disagree. That place is awful. Yeah. I went in there once. We never go in there, there anymore. A, I don't I've not gone in there in years, but there is a world of Nintendo exclusive. A golden, oh, you a told, golden yeah. link. And I walked in there and tried to avert my eyes from ninety percent of the store and I eventually ran into a, a a worker who was like, Can I help you find something? And I was like, Do you have this world of Nintendo exclusive gold link? And he's like we don't carry that kind of stuff. Go to FIE or FYE. And I was like, no, dude, it's an exclusive to your store. And I walked out. <laughs> I was like, I'm yeah, never coming back here. They're yet. not very. S- okay. So to continue, um, I'm also fairly confident that Mag the Mighty might be a Barnes and Noble exclusive because they, they've done a couple of so. other, several other um, Game of Thrones exclusives. Next on my list is Peach Dragon. Um, it's a two pack with the six inch invisible Eli- Elliot and with Pete and it looks really cool. And I'm not really sure if that would be one to be available someplace else or not. I wouldn't think so because they had the, they just had the mass release of him. So, right. Yeah. But you never know. And I know that I said that I hate Dorbs. And I do hate dwarves. <laughs> I do not like dwarves. I think they should stop. I think dwarves should die. I think they should die as well. However, they have sucked me in with an exclusive three pack, Game of Thrones three pack, with. That's totally going to be available. It better be. I mean, I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to be hard to get, regardless. Who, hopefully, who because is it a three pack of? It's Joffrey Baratheon. Um. One of the like White Walkers, and dun dun dun, the Hound in his <laughs> armor. He is in his armor. He's got a cute little smile on his face, and he's got his Hound helmet on, and he is precious. What a weird collection of characters. It though. is. Well, I mean, you know, the Hound was meant to protect Joffrey and blah 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 blah. Uh, but okay. I don't really know okay. why the White Walkers in there. Yeah, I guess the White Walker is the weird one. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it is the weird one. But he is absolutely adorable, and I need to have it. And I'm hoping that since people don't like Dorbs, that it won't be hard for me to get that. Is he Dorbs? He is Dorbs. He is totally. He is tote Dorbs. I feel like that's the whole marketing (laughs) meeting. 
Hey, let's make really extra like, cute little figures. Look at his Won't they be cute, adorable? Look at his cute, precious little smile on his face. Okay, moving on. He's so cute. <laughs> Sorry. It is really cute. Um, <laughs> next is Nightmare Before Christmas. They have a pajama Jack Skellington. He's like in his pajamas. He's got like his little book open and yeah, he's smiling. I'd like to have it, but I'm not going on my way for it. I'm sure that's going to be a Hot Topic exclusive. Then I might buy it. Um, the other one that I really want that... I'm going to have to get on Toy Tokyo, just like the uh, Planet Arley of Vegeta, because he's really cute, is the, from the movie Up, is Doug with the Cone of Shame. Squirrels! The look on his face is just way too cute. <laughs> he has that, like, look of, like, he's absolutely worried. Like, it's precious. Mm. Absolutely precious. Uh, continuing, <laughs> we've got Doctor Strange with Rune, yeah, which that one looks really cool, and I'm not sure... If I would expect that one to be anywhere else, it better be. it's one of like the only like three that I. I I'm really not want. sure where it would be. Is it one of the only Marvel ones? No, there's another. I mean, th there's a couple of other Marvel ones. There's not a whole lot of Marvel, but there are a few others. Interesting. The other one being the translucent, translucent glitter green goblin with glider. Oh yeah, I don't that's care. a mouthful right At there. <laughs> glitter green <laughs> goblin with glider. Um, How many variations of green green goblin do you need? Really? I know. Is this the third this one's really cool though because he's on he's on his glider. Yeah, I don't care. The glider's really cool. It should have been that one. On his glider. I'm not sure. I would feel like that one would be a limited edition, but I don't know. Oh, it's gotta be. I mean, they've already had. Uh, it's the fourth version. I know. He's cool, but it's he's the not one. Version of the Green Goblin. Yeah, because there was the original mass release, just plain Green Goblin. And then there was the Walgreens Chase Green Goblin that was metallic. Then there was... Uh, I don't know uh, what the other... I know it was a it comic... Was a convention exclusive. Yeah. I can't remember what it was. Uh, actually, I don't even remember what it looked like now. But there I, was feel like, I feel like that was like a... I feel like that was a translucent glitter green goblin. But just like that was it. Or maybe he gl was a glow in the dark. Yeah, I think that's what it but was. It was like glow in the dark. It was glow in the dark. I remember that. Yeah. But... So it's like they just took the same thing and they just added this glider. Next thing you'll know, they'll do one with like a pumpkin bomb in his hand or something. So, continuing, we already mentioned the Haunted Mansion Ghost Pops. They've got Ezra, Gus, Hatbox Ghost, and Phineas. And they're cute, and I'll never have them. So, mo whatever, moving on. <laughs> one, the other one that Dustin is super excited for is the Pirates of the Caribbean, the Cursed Barbosa. And he's got his little, like, monkey thing with him. Super tight. And he looks pretty cool. It does but actually look kind of good, and I don't like zombie things They confirm that for being anywhere? Not yet that I've heard. Better be somewhere. So, perhaps the most exciting of them all, though, and probably the hardest one mm. I think it's is going to be to get, and I'm not sure how we're going to get it, but we're going to have to get it. So if you're listening, and you're going, and you like me, or you like any of us, and you happen to get an extra one, please, I will do almost anything for it. It's the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Beerus Funko Pop. Damn you, Funko. Are they yep. going to make a normal? Because this isn't just a normal. I'm sure, they'll, metallic, I'm sure right? they'll make a normal one, which also might be might end up being an exclusive somewhere. No. It's just that I have, I have every Dragon Ball Z pop that's come out so far. Period, even the I am random a, colors. I am, yeah completionist mode at this point i have to have every version uh, well and i love beerus he's like probably one of my favorites aside from like boo and piccolo but i love beerus he's again he's like he's tote storbs or whatever tote storbs. yeah he's really cute and i'm sure you know they'll make a fat beerus at some point and blah 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 blah, well, blah that's, but that's not beerus though it's a different character you're a different character okay um He's twenty dollars at the Comic Con limit, two per customer. So, and he is said to not be anywhere else, not even online. Good luck. I'll be spending like one hundred and fifty dollars on it. Probably. Yeah, probably, which will be worth it because I mean, as soon as you see one pop up on eBay, you should buy it because he's going to end up jacking up to like Planet Arley of Vegeta prices. I'm sure. Yikes. And then that's pretty much it, other than my honorable mentions. Um, they have a Deadpool thumbs up. He's black and white, mostly white with black. They have the 
<laughs> it's black and white, mostly white with black. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like mostly white with like his black accents or whatever. It's stupid. It just sounded funny. Um, Duck Dodgers. I see, I've seen a lot of people post on our Facebook page that they're super excited for that one. Um, yeah, that's, it's kind of a random license to bring back. Yeah, and but he's it's, cool. it's limited edition. Um, they have the glow in the dark blue gamma one, which is seven hundred and fifty pieces, and then wow, they have the so few. yeah. Well, and then they've got the glow in the dark white gamma, which is fifteen hundred pieces. Man. So again, those limited edition ones are going to be hard to find. And then uh, last ones are Gears of War Marcus with a head. I don't really. I, d- I don't have a picture of it, so I'm guessing he's holding a head or something. Or I didn't really look at it. That's limited edition to a thousand pieces. And then the one that I actually would be more um, likely to get, even though I don't want to go down that road, is Marcus with the Golden Lancer variant. And because I'm a sucker for the Lancer, Lancer's like my favorite thing. So I've got a Lancer tattoo. So you, you, you got to love that even even at the convention, there's exclusives of the exclusives. <laughs> <laughs> like how far into the rabbit hole are we going on that one? <laughs> right. Variants of That's the variant crazy. exclusives. Very, yeah. yeah. Uh, variants of the exclusives at the cons. I can't believe you can get at the cons. Like on the, the Ninja Turtle train this year. Yeah, that's With true. Ev- I mean, like everybody old. else is on the Ninja Turtle train. Even Bluefin has, yeah, a random little Ninja Turtle. Yeah, that, fin, that does surprise me. I mean, subjects, Kid they, Robot, NECA, everybody. They might they might had have some Turtles exclusives. <laughs> if, if they did, they're not on my list because I don't like Turtles. So... <laughs> Um, that's, that's it for Funko Pop. So there are a ton of exclusives, as usual, uh, at San Diego Comic-Con. This year, it seems to be an inordinate amount even more than normal because of Funko in particular. Uh, and, and really, just because of the popularity of San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con, it's become a hub of collectibles. And so, that being said, we do think that there are going to be some things that are going to be hot off the peg as well as peg warmers. And so we each kind of have our own predictions. Uh, Ashley, you want to start us off? Sure. My hot off the peg prediction for San Diego Comic-Con is going to be the Beerus Funko Pop. I'm thinking that I don't know how many they're going to have, really. So I guess it could. That. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they've announced it. So it could be, you know, tons among tons. And he may not be that hard to get but i just feel like he's just gonna skyrocket to planet arley at vegeta prices soon just because of how limited he is unless for some reason they do end up putting him online and then yeah that is my prediction for hot off the peg for san diego comic-con dustin you got anything you think it's gonna be flying off the shelves what are you uh, going for aside from the funko obviously i, I really think these little subjects um Ninja Turtles figures are going to be really popular. I agree. My beef is that, I like, as far as what's going to be hot off the peg, I don't know. But I can tell you it's going to be Funko Pops. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know the specific figure, the specific character, but I can tell you everyone's going to be waiting I mean, for Funko Pops. I think you're extra right about Beerus, though, because it's at a separate booth. You're going to have to go wait in a separate line. Any of those booth exclusive exclusives that are exclusive to San Diego Comic Con exclusively, only at exclusively <laughs> this one booth exclusively, I think are going to be the hardest. I mean, I might change that to the the Haunted Mansion pops too, though, because I think Haunted Mansion has a bigger fan base probably than Dragon Ball Z does. But well, the reason I'm the reason I'm just saying generic, like generally, it's going to be the Funko is because right, they will. seem to be limiting the pieces to a thousand pieces or less for a lot of these that's nuts yeah like and, it, said, and it's just go and it's just the hot collector item right now just yeah, it's it is yeah and they know it and they're making they're gonna make bank off yeah it. Uh, but i agree i like the little subjects figures yeah, a lot I mean, and i hate blind boxes and so the way that they've been doing their exclusive has been little uh bubble packages yeah they're the best and you know what you're buying and i love that best finals this year for turtles we get the michelangelo single pack the Nickelodeon exclusive Slash and Raphael two pack, Slash and Weatherhead two pack. I think there's a Don too, with like a grappling hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don Tello. They they all look great. I would love to have all of them because they're all articulated and. I love the loyal subject pops or not pops vinyl figures. I just wish they weren't blind box mystery. 
That's my only complaint. Otherwise, I would have every single Power Ranger that they've made. I would have every single turtle that they've made. Uh, I just don't have a stomach for for live box. That's so same, that's why I love the SDCC stuff. Is it's not live box. Yeah, same with Kid Robot. I love. Yeah, their stuff's fantastic. Anyway, so what do you think is going to be a peg warmer? And Dustin and I are probably both going to go with Marvel Legends. Yeah. Do you yeah. think anything's going to be worse than that raft set? That's my my bet is the raft set. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff there that's not going to sell it. Uh, I'd say that set, that set will probably sell. I mean, you're still getting value, and a lot of people that are out of box collectors are going to want some of the figures out of that set at least. Sure. That Marvel Universe set, though, or the three and three quarter Marvel Legends set, is going to be the bomb. It's I don't, gonna, I don't, bomb. I don't think it's going to bomb. I think people. Oh, it's t- it's totally going to bomb. I, don't, I, I mean, <laughs> I don't think it. I don't think it'll sell as well as. Some of the other stuff it's they sold in the past, but I think that people are still going to go. They're going to still going to buy it. No. See, I would normally unless say they're in box collectors, they're not going to buy it because the price point alone is. I mean that that's true. The price sixty nine ninety nine, and there you only have one articulated figure. That's my beef with that set. I wouldn't. I would be tempted to say the Transformers set is not going to sell well. However, uh, that Titans, the Titans Return line, it's just coming to stores, and it's really popular and so i'm i'm wondering if uh if it's gonna sell pretty well otherwise from the history history shows that the transformers exclusives kind of sit there right it seems like transformers are coming you know getting back into the prom the the combiners worn line that they did this last year or so was really popular kind of playing on the fact that you know you can connect your transformers into a giant robot which how is that not fun and then <laughs> they're playing off the similar tactile uh, feel of, of taking out the little figure, turning it into the head, popping it onto the robot, or he can all the little heads can man the vehicle like a vehicle, or man the gun like a gun or like a cannon, like a turret and stuff. I can't believe Build the Bear hasn't gotten into the Comic Con thing yet with all the licensing and stuff they've been picking up. Yeah, Build a Bear is. I don't know why. I th- I think their main market is still kids, and so they're just they're like they know they have a an adult collector community. But I yeah, I think it'd be a good idea because there are a lot of kids that go to Comic Con. People do are take there really yeah, people take their kids there a lot, and I think it would open it up to be a little more kid friendly and not so crazy and chaotic. Hopefully. If they were to do something like that, they would just I have to Build-A-Bear make sure that they too, had though, enough. Like it's all about the experience. Like That's they, l- like they're really heavy on the experience and not just right. the product, um, because like they'll do like pop up stores and at Christmas time at like Macy's and stuff, but they still do the full like stuffing experience. And, and they could. I was gonna say yeah. though, they could. Oh, they cool could. They did it at the con. That would be. Just, I just bet that they would uh, attract a lot of attention just doing imagine that. Imagine San Diego Comic Con exclusive Build a Bears. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I don't even want to think I about know. it. I'm feeling you're all stressed immediately now. <laughs> <laughs> like just imagining it. <laughs> like Is this whole episode, I'm like, eh. If I don't get any of really Bill Bear excuses. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I will stomp small children. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be the, the line would be hilarious, right? Because it would be like a ton of parents with their kids, who got either they knew about the Builder Bears or they saw the Builder Bear, and the kid was like. I am not moving an inch until <laughs> you get me one of those builder bears, and then it would be spattered, like s- like scattered throughout the line of like parents with their children would be like the Jennifers and the Ashleys. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, come on! I, I must have it now. You know, <laughs> like come on. I could just see it though. They could have like several stations and several people there to yeah. do the whole experience. I mean, obviously have like. Well, Three or four exclusive bears or something like that to choose from, so it'd make it go a little bit faster. Yeah, I don't think Build a Bear n- quite understands what they've tapped into as much as they've been doing these licensed things because they've got Star Wars, Star Trek, Ghostbusters. They did My Little Pony, like, all, but I don't think they, they understand know, like the they hysteria know. they could create by going to some of these places. They know the licenses make them money, mm-hmm. but I don't think they know that they are tapping into or at least have the potential to tap into a really, really popular, broad market. Right. Yeah. They still see themselves as attractional and experiential. Yes. Uh, and are pretty staunch about that. But, yeah, it would be really interesting to see if they could adapt 
their model to expand it to stuff like this. Well, it's interesting because I know I've met I met a guy before who did a Walking Dead experience at one of the oh cons. yeah remember mm-hmm. you and I met him Jennifer yeah so like his company was simply tasked like it wasn't AMC or whatever his his own you know the company that he worked for their job was basically to make the booth experience more of a like immersive immersive interactive experience uh and not just walking past the booth with like the candy bowl mm-hmm. and so i can see build a bear tapping on cuz that's the thing too is i would be really bored at san diego comic con mm-hmm. cuz it would be a lot of lines and a lot of like mm-hmm. waiting in one or two lines so it'd be fun to be able to go to a booth or two that wasn't the norm but sure. it was a little more fun so if you hear us, Build a Bear, get on it. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer will will love you even more. <laughs> okay, is there any one specific item? If you could pick any exclusive s- from this year at Comic Con, what would it be? Oh, that's hard for me because as much as I bash the Marvel Legends set, <laughs> 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 you're gonna have to eat your words now. Well, I mean, yeah, you know, if I, if uh, <laughs> I'm not it's saying you get it for free, I'm saying no, you still have to pay for it. So I know, I know. Well, see, yeah, that's the thing. If someone wants to give me that raft set, I'll take it. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll, that Dread Knight is fine. I would take that Dread Knight. I, d- I don't need anyone else in that set though, other than Enchantress maybe. But uh, actually, it's a toss up right now. Like with my own money, I would buy the Transformer set because I, the Titans Return sounds cool to me. And so I would buy that three pack of Brainstorm, the Sentinel Prime or whatever, and uh, Windblade. Hmm. Okay. But uh, which is uh, atypical for me because I I got out of Transformers for a while and they're trying to get me back in. I mean, yeah, it looks great. I wouldn't argue with it. But Jennifer's giving me the stink eye. (laughs) Don't do it. Um, But uh, the Kylo Ren I want pretty bad because that banner is just slick. I said pick one. Well, I can't I can't decide between those <laughs> two. Okay, if I'm picking one, Transformers. Transformers. Transformers r- Titan Return set. Ashley. It's kinda hard for me. It's it's a toss up between obviously the beer is pop and the ha- the like haunted mansion ones. Only because they're so limited. I mean if I had the opportunity to get them. I think if I if I had the opportunity to get like whatever I I could, I would probably get the haunted mansion pops only because like I still will get a Beerus, and Some I'll other way. and I'll I'll pay like a hundred and fifty dollars for them or whatever. But for Versus all versus the haunted mansion pops, which are which are impossible. would be impossible. Yeah, are gonna get them. Um, th- I mean, they they'll be up in like the thousand dollar range yeah. or something like it's that for a whole set of them. Yeah, completely ridiculous. So that's what I would choose, I guess. Jennifer, do you have anything? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> We're really thrilling Jennifer this whole podcast. <laughs> I honestly think now that now that I know of it, I would pick the Broly. You'd pick the Broly? Yeah. I mean I already have the original Broly, but I'll take a I'll take a variant. I but like the green Super Saiyan hair. It's that you know, neon I wish it were green. like <laughs> I want the, the slim down original form yes. Broly. That would be fantastic. Oh my goodness. I would love that. One of these days, hopefully. One of these days, hopefully. <laughs> They're cranking DBZ uh, figure arts out. So yeah, they crank really cool. them out faster. They do. They're slow. Mm-hmm. Not just like repaints. Repaints and battle damage. That's yeah. all they keep doing. I still want a Piccolo. There's one at Barnes & Noble. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're not selling. I keep waiting for it to go on sale. <laughs> <laughs> Which is sad, too, because that's not a good sign. I want a Boo. I, I want, want there to be a Boo, too. I want a Vegeta baby. And, and I want an Android 18. It's all kinds of things I want. All right. Well, that's San Diego Comic-Con exclusives for us. The goods, the bads, the stupid Funkos, the hot off the pegs and the peg warmers. There is one thing we didn't talk about because I don't know if they're doing exclusives for the convention, but the Four Horsemen, uh, which is – their own private sculpting company. They've got credentials all across the place from DC figures to Marvel figures and so on and what forth. Uh, but they created a line that they kickstarted called Mythic Legions. It was originally going to be a three and three quarter inch line. It is now a six inch line. It is Glios compatible, which it means that they can combine with the Glios line of little collectible figures that 
mix match uh, parts and stuff. And it is just basically a really cool boss looking six inch, six inch line of knights and skeleton knights and vampires and demons and stuff. And they're just really cool. These uh, things lots are so of, awesome. Oh, they're awesome. Lots of armor bits, great w- amount of accessories. They've got individual characters that are brand new characters. They did a Minotaur. They've got specific characters with specific heads and stuff that certain Barbarian knights that they've knight given with names. His giant hammer and two swords well and that's not even the first wave they the first wave has over 30 figures and then they're announcing they've been slowly announcing wave 1.75 is what they've been calling it at the moment they've been slowly announcing different repaints that kind of you know play off masters of the universe figures or uh just whatever different repaints black knight they've got a, a new forest knight that's that green forest and knight's my favorite i think he, that's my favorite awesome. too he looks awesome i've been sitting here trying to I figure like out like what my favorite was i like I'm the forest sure knight and i really like the minotaur guy the the minotaur from the first wave was really popular this new one in the 1.75 wave has a little bit more armor I love which his actually he- looks really great i love his head the the minotaur head's fantastic yeah and it's it's a really interesting line because it's glass compatible. You've got all these accessories and the arms and legs and heads and everything pop off really nice, and you can mix and match and make your own personal knight really well. And the, one of the most popular aspects of the first wave was there were multiple there were multiple uh, kind of like uh, builder sets that came with all of the different little items that could come with some of the figures. And so they're doing that with the knight as well this time around. So they're going to do a knight figure that has all the different knight heads, uh, all the different uh, weapons that would come with one of the knights. And so it's a really cool line. I believe they're going to be at San Diego Comic-Con. But the entire first wave is super-duper sold out. And as soon as Store Horsemen, uh, the Four Horsemen, post on their website, the Store Horsemen. (laughs) 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 It's silly, but it works. Uh, the this 1.75 line uh this wave 1.75 wave it's going to sell out immediately too so go catch them out we love we love supporting uh kickstarted and in 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 like individual co- toy company lines like i am elemental um and the four horsemen with their mythic legions i i like these figures better than the gothtropolis ravens the gothtropolis ravens we got two of them they're really great they look fantastic, but they're they're not built as well, and so they, they don't stand up by themselves very well. They look stunning, but integrating some of the articulation and doing the things that they did this time around with Mythic Legions kind of solved that. So they're getting better, and so we love to support uh, companies like this that can do more, whether it's six-inch night figures like this or Boss Fight Studios with their three-and-three-quarter-inch little uh, line of Amazon warriors and uh, Roman and Greek guys. Then, and then they're going to be doing more here in the future too. So support these companies. Check them out as well. If you're going to San Diego, stop by Four Horsemen, see if they've got any cool figures. So, so that wraps up our episode on San Diego Comic-Con, you guys. Uh, nothing too crazy. We did just end up going to Louisville, Louisville's own little Derby City Comic Con, which was a lot of fun. My parents came out, shout out to Randy and Nadine, and had a lot of fun. They wore nerd shirts and were really great sports. And we also got, if you guys haven't listened to it, we got to have a cool interview with uh, Brian and Ming from the Comic Book Men AMC TV series, which Ashley was a little bit starstruck over Brian Johnson. Uh, but they were really great guys. They, they uh, had a lot of fun talking with us. I ticked them off about calling them movie stars, though. Or yeah, TV stars. <laughs> don't do that. It was fun. Hey, it got it was Brian funny engaged. though. Was yeah. Fun. <laughs> um, we do have a giveaway going on right now. If w- our Facebook page gets up to 220 likes, we will use a random name generator to or a random name selector to pick a winner of the Marvel Collector Core exclusive Lady Thor Funko Pop. So it's pretty cool looking and. Like our Facebook page, share it, and we will uh, pick a winner here once we hit 220 likes. So again, this is Ryan Bell. Dust to free partner. Ashley Bartok. Jennifer Bell. Thanks for listening. Peace. Thanks for listening to Peg Warmers. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under the name Peg Warmers. You can also contact us at pegwarmerspodcast at gmail.com. 
Visit our website to check out our other shows on the DNN Destination Nation Network at destinationcomics.com. And to see us in person or to see some of the toys we've mentioned on Peg Warmers, visit the store at 5031 Shelbyville Road, Louisville, Kentucky.